हेलो एवरी वन आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सांजा थियन एंड द नाइट किंग स्टोरी लाइन इन माई पार्ट वन रिव्यू वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो आई डिस्कस द ड्रैगन फिट समिट जॉन एंड डैनी एंड रेगार एंड लियाना सीन्स आई ऑल्सो पोस्ट माई सीजन एट प्रिडिक्शंस एंड एपिसोड सिक्स क्यू एन ए वीडियो सून मेक श्योर टू सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल एंड ऑल्सो क्लिक ऑन द बेल नेक्स्ट टू इट टू एक्टिवेट नोटिफिकेशन फॉर दिस चैनल एज फॉर जेमी I'm still happy to see that after everything just a couple of dialogues from Brian are enough to resurrect Jamie's honor even though Cersei kills it again and again the moment she gets Jamie alone with her but this time even Cersei couldn't stop Jamie by the way do you remember Jamie making a promise to anyone when he said i made a promise i was like no you didn't it was Cersei who made the promise I think Jamie was talking about Brienne. Jamie might like Brienne, but Brienne has a new suitor in her life now. I really hope that Tormund is alive and will meet her when she goes back to Winterfell. I even tweeted a poll asking people to vote for their ship name, and most of the people voted for Trienne. So I'm gonna call this ship Trienne now. By the way, did you notice the music when the first snow falls on Jamie's hand? I love that music. It was the slow version of the opening title probably to indicate the start of a new time or era or something winter has finally reached king's landing now it's all over westeros and with that music you can actually feel that the dark times or rather darker times are coming by the way what will happen to poor sir bron of the blackwater now that jemy has left the city too I don't see Cersei being very fond of him because he had helped arrange the meeting. She might even blame him for Jamie leaving her because if the meeting hasn't been arranged, Jamie wouldn't have left and she has already talked with Jamie about punishing Bronn before. Bronn better run for his life if he wants to live. Danny hasn't shown much mourning towards Viserion's loss, at least not as much as I had expected her to. The only time she used his death was to send John on a guilt trip for refusing to lie. She said that Viserion has died trying to get them there, and the least John could have done was lie. She didn't like his choice, but at least she respected him for it. And did you see the look on Sir Jorah's face when Danny said, "We sail together." Poor Sir Jorah. I don't know whether I should feel sad for him or be happy that my John Aegis ship has finally set sail. It was so beautiful and sad at the same time. I can't get it out of my head. It sounded similar to the Stark theme music, but also had a different feel to it. It also reminded me of the possibilities if Rhaegar and Lyanna have revealed their marriage. So much could have been different. Anyways, I love the Jon Aerys theme music. Wait, what? Jon Aerys isn't the right ship name anymore, but I was planning to print out Jon Aerys t-shirts. Even her ship name Jonaris has sunk because John's real name isn't John anymore. It's Aegon Targaryen. What should we call them now? Aegonaris, Aegoris, or Dagon? Let me know what you like the most in the comments below. And why was Tyrion standing outside Danny's door? I know I have called Bran Bran the Warrior before, but what should we call Tyrion now? Mishra seven eight nine o has said, Tyrion was jealous. A love triangle. Hope you noticed that. At first, I had the same thought. Is he jealous? But then I thought about his expressions when he noticed John and Danny staring at each other, or when he talked to her about John being in love with her. He had smiled in those scenes. So I don't think he is jealous romantically. I don't think there will be a love triangle here. It's more complicated than that. I think there are several possibilities to what was going on in his head. First, he has dreamed about Danny building a better world with him standing by her side. With John in the picture, he might think his importance will decline in some way. Second, he has tried to talk to Danny about her successor to the throne in case anything happened to her. Maybe he had hoped that she will name him, but with John in the picture, that ship has sailed too. or third maybe he thought about how things will get more complicated with cersei and was disappointed that john and danny doesn't even care anymore which one do you think it is the sam and bran scene was hilarious 
Bran said that Robert's rebellion was built on a lie, but it wasn't. It was built on Robert's delusion and ego and Rhaegar's stupidity. Robert didn't even consider the possibility that a girl could leave him and choose someone else, especially a married man. And Rhaegar should have told someone about his marriage. Rhaegar wasn't happy with his marriage with Helia, and he was also obsessed with the prince that was promised prophecy. And Lyanna never wanted to marry Robert in the first place. As I've said in my Howland Reads role in John's birth video, I still believe that he was sent to Heron Hall to make fire and ice meet. Go check out that video and let me know what you think about it. I'll leave the link in the descriptions below. And it was a good thing that Rhaegar married Lyanna or it would have been very confusing to know what to call John. Should we call him John Sand because he was born in Dawn or John Waters because he was Rhaegar's son who was a citizen of King's Landing. I think they should have chosen John Waters in the show rather than John Sand. What do you think? By the way, I am so pissed that they finally showed Rhaegar but didn't even show us his face. Sean Kilaki had asked, Did you think Rhaegar was actually the same guy who played Viserys back in season 1? I did. You are not the only one, Sean. I saw many people asking the same question when the show aired. I didn't think it was the same guy because I really liked Harry Lloyd as Viserys. And I've said earlier that he even looks a lot like Devin Oliver, the guy most fans wanted to see as Rhaegar. I think David and Dan knew that the fans have been expecting someone like him and they might not like Wilf's scolding as much compared to Devin. So they made him dress exactly like Viserys. They probably even gave him his old wig too. <laughs> Just kidding. So same dressing style, same hair and no face. It's not a surprise that people thought it was Viserys. In the end, I just want to point something out from episode 6. It just crossed my mind and I wanted to get your views on it. Did you notice how the frozen lake near the lands of always winter looks a lot like God's eye? Just look at the aerial shot of the lake and then compare it to God's eye on the map. The rock in the middle of the frozen lake saved John and his companions lives. What if this is just a sign that the rock in the middle of God's eye, aka the Isle of Faces, can save them too? I know I have discussed this with someone in the comments section of a video, probably in my Heron Hall's Curse Theory video. But I think that Bran and maybe even John and Danny need to go to the Isle of Faces if they want to save everyone. I still think that there might be some children of the forest living there to protect it from men. Anyways. It's time for the comment shout out now. Today's comment shout out goes to Gatti Brings the Hearty, who said, I love your videos. You are very observant without becoming nitpicky. We can tell you really appreciate the work the creators put into the series as well as your own audience. You are awesome. Thanks a lot for your kind words. I'm really glad that you love my videos. So, what do you think about these theories? Don't forget to tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, share the video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye bye. See you in my next video.